And welcome back to College Algebra. This will be our last discussion, our last video on our Introduction to Functions chapter. Here we're going to talk about modeling with functions, which are basically just applications of functions. And we're going to jump straight into some exercises. We're going to start off by looking at this problem from the homework set. It says a rectangle has one corner in quadrant one on the graph of y equal 36 x minus x squared. So this downward facing parabola. And you can see how they form this rectangle is they pick a point on the parabola, they draw straight over to the y-axis, straight down to the x-axis. This distance then would be the x-coordinate. You know, the x is the distance from the vertical axis out to the point y is this distance and then they want us to express the area of the rectangle as a function of x well if you look at this box here this distance is just x so that's easy enough this is x this is y right now our area you know is length times width so x times y the problem is we need it to just be in terms of x. Need a function of x. Well, we need to get rid of this y then. Well, to do that, we know y in terms of x is just this. So, this is just x times 36 minus x squared, or 36x minus x cubed. So there we go. That's what we put in there. Looks like there's more than one question. 36x minus x cubed. What is the domain? Now this is kind of an interesting question when you're getting into applications. Because applications not only have numerical restrictions on their domain, they have practical restrictions. So let me explain. x is the width of the rectangle, right? what's the smallest x could be? Well, numerically, it could be negative infinity. Practically, though, it cannot be less than zero. You cannot have a box with a negative width. So, our bottom would be zero. Our top, well, the largest possible we could have you can see that as well. That's when the height goes past 36 up here. Because that means you're going to have an area of zero as well. And if you go beyond that, well, you're going to start having negative areas again. So you can tell the places where that happens. When x equals zero, the area goes to zero. But also when this thing goes to zero. And that's going to be when x equals six. So the domain of A would be 0 to 6. Oh, we got the bracket going the wrong way. And that should be it. Hmm. They don't like me including the endpoints, I don't think. Yeah. Um, that's arguable on the endpoints. They were not specific. I would say the formula itself definitely allows for an area of zero. Practically, you can't build a physical box with an area of zero that easily. It's always going to have something in it, even if it's just molecules. But oh well. Graph A equal A of X for what value of X is A largest? All right, let's go get our calculator. Going to do a problem like this. Well, we graph it. So we got 36X minus x to the third. Take a look there. Yeah, I won't be able to see it here. We need to change our window. Let's change our y max to, let's say 150 for now. See how that does. And you see it's zero and six, it's zero. But right up here, that's where we want to find it. You could just find it from the trace, but remember, we actually have a function in here for finding a maximum. Get that, left bound, 
right bound. And I guess. Alright. For what value of x is a largest, it looks like 3.46. And then, what was the largest value of A? I didn't actually pay that much attention to that. Let's see. The largest value was about 83. So that's about the largest area you could get out of it. Let's do problem 12. So here we've got a wire is 10 meters long. And we're gonna cut it into two pieces. One piece is gonna be an equilateral triangle. The other piece will be a circle. So, if we're going to get an equilateral triangle, that is a triangle with three equal sides, and the other piece is a circle, Oop. It's failed right at the end there, there yeah, well. Express the total area enclosed by the pieces of wire as a function of the length x of a side of the equilateral triangle. So this is x by x. All right then. Well, we have to take three x's away from 10 to make this, which means the outside of this circle is 10 minus 3x. So what's the total area as a function of x? Well, the area of this thing we can find by finding the height. We know from the Pythagorean theorem. So half of x squared plus h squared equals x squared. So then the height squared is x squared minus, subtract that over, that's one fourth x squared. So that's three fourths x squared. So h is square root of 3 over 2, because square root both sides, square root, of, square root of fraction is square root of 3, which doesn't reduce, square root of 4, which does simplify, and square root of x squared, which is just x. So, so far our area is going to equal uh, 1 half base times height for a triangle, so 1 half base would be x, height would be square root of 3 over 2, x. So square root of 3 over 4, x squared. Plus, well, area of a circle is pi r squared, but we do not know the radius yet. We do know the circumference. That's the distance around the outside of a circle. We know circumference, which is 2 pi r, is 10 minus 3x. So that'll do for us, because that means r is 10 minus 3x over 2 pi. Which then means we can plug into that. Our area of our circle equals pi r squared, so pi times 10 minus 3x over 2 pi squared, which would be pi times 10. I'm trying to decide whether I want to actually multiply that out or not. I think I'm just going to leave it as 10 minus 3x squared on the top. On the bottom, that's 4 pi squared. So the pi's cancel out, so you got 10 minus 3x squared over 4 pi. So the total area is our square root of 3 over 4x squared plus 10 minus 3x squared over 4 pi. What is the domain? Well, for part B, think about A here. Again, practically, what's the lowest x could be? Well, remember, x, gotta go back. Whenever you're doing an application problem, you need to know what your variables stand for. 
In this case, we set up x to be side length of a triangle. Well, the absolute lowest it could be would be zero. If it's zero, we're building just the circle. So, zero would be the bottom edge. Again, they'd probably use a parenthesis. I disagree in concept, so I'm putting a square bracket. But if I were doing the homework, I'd put a parenthesis. And the highest, well, this one, think about it again. What's the absolute highest X could be if I've got to build a triangle? Well, I only have 10 meters. I'm using three pieces to do this, so this has to be up to 10 over 3. Any bigger than that, I'll be building a circle with a negative amount of material, which is impossible. So just the practical domain here. All right, let's look at the graph. Ooh, I did some, we had some neat, uh, neat formulas and calculus today. So we have the square root of three. Close that over four. X squared plus 10 minus three X. Squared divided by, and make sure you put this in parentheses because it's got two factors on the bottom, divided by 4 pi. And that ought to be the whole thing, so we graph that. Gotta change my window. Uh, for right now, we'll see standard, but I know I'm gonna have to change my y's. Maybe not. You can see the minimum right there. So let's go into calc. Let's get minimum. Right bound. Guess. So the minimum is right about 2.07. So at about 2.07 you have the smallest total area of the two shapes. So a 2.07 by 2.07 by 2.07 uh, triangle, and then 10 minus 3 times 2.07 uh, circumference circle. I think that's probably all we're gonna do for this lecture. Uh, I have two more examples I want to do from this section, and they're both pretty long. So I think I will save those for next time.